What is going on, everybody? We finally have it. The big one, the Masters. We're going to be talking through our DFS thoughts, maybe talk about a few other guys we might like it as, as sleepers. It's uh, obviously a loaded field would be uh, an understatement, and it's a little more loaded today because Tiger is going to play, it looks like, and that's exciting. So uh, just even from a, from a viewing standpoint, I've been looking forward to this for a while. I'm really excited to have Tiger back, and I'm excited to play some big tournaments and hopefully win one of us or, uh, or, or your users on the site a million dollars or somewhere in the uh, some some sort of life altering money and it's a really really wild with these tournaments I just want to say one thing that I noticed because I was when I was new to golf and everything you have players that basically will show up and in basketball guys don't usually you know if there's like only so many people to choose from and everything being equal you don't get guys like one percent or two percent owned who are won the tournament last time they had this and stuff like that and you have that this week it's a very strange situation because there's so many good golfers but um, we're going to try and narrow it down. We're going to try and focus on our favorites. And uh, Sheets, let's, uh, any sort of overall thoughts before we jump into the Masters? Yeah. So first of all, I want to talk about last week for a minute. Um, so I was away last week. And I, although I did look at the Valero Open, I remember we, I had to record on my own. Uh, you were out that day. And, and I, I came up with some picks. I put a lot of work into it. And I actually put in like, I uh, had 150 uh, I went 150 max. I played, I played pretty big. I played like four or $5,000 worth of golf. Oh, wow. Well, because I knew I also wasn't going to be around for it to play anything else, you know, because right, I right, was going right. to be in St. Martin. So I figured I would, I would put everything in on Tuesday because I was leaving first thing Wednesday morning. Right. And if I needed to edit something, you can't put anything in from an illegal place, but you can edit it. You know what I mean? Like whatever. So I figured I would do that. Put a lot of work into it. I put 150 lineups in and then, then I left. And then Wednesday, um, I was going to go check and see, you know, if anything changed. And I saw that all of my lineups had been unregistered. Okay. Hmm. And, and my, my balance is back where it was. And so I emailed them like, what the hell? You know what I mean? Like you took everything out. Is it because I was I'm, I get in an illegal country now? I asked you this beforehand. I said, listen, I'm, I'm leaving. First of all, I asked you if it was legal to play there. You said no. And I said, okay, can I put my stuff in before? They said, absolutely. And then, you know, whatever. I, I, first of all, you got to get my account restored. And second of all, I want my entries back. Right. Because I can't put them in from here. You know, I get my entries back. And they, they emailed me back and they said, um, uh, they said, yes, so your account has been restricted because of we uh, suspected of account sharing because you were this, 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 this. You need to send an ID and, and all this stuff. And it's from St. Martin. I'm like, okay, I'll do it. But I'm just telling you what happened. Maybe I'm still logged in in New York or something like that, mm. but I'm certain or whatever. And then they said, okay, we can get your uh, account back. And I said, okay, now get me my entries back. Because, but, but the thing is that the, 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 the tournaments were already like sold out. Right. Right. So they couldn't get me any of my stuff back. I went off with, 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 with no entries and you know what? Screw them, because I would have gotten crushed. Okay, <laughs> um, but they 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 reinstated my account, and nice enough, they gave me five entries into the hundred dollar uh, Millie Baker for for that's my good. inconvenience. That's good, and that's appropriate. Good job. Yes. Yes. So not only did they save me five thousand dollars, but um, <laughs> uh, but you know, in, for the inconvenience, so I got five entries into this Millie Maker this week which um, I plan to chop with you. So if 500,000 is good enough, so normally I would say, yeah, I'll let you win it. But this one, just because of the way it all went down, yeah. I need to kind of win. So, so, so just for, just for, for, for good. principle's sake. So you, so you and I, if we can split it, that would be great. Yep. Sounds good to me, man. I'm in, I'm in. Um, right. So, right, so we... to answer your question, this is like the masters is, you know, a tradition unlike any other in that they make the pricing such that you can play incredible golfers. Like you were saying, yep. um, and be really happy about your lineups. Now there's a, there's a, there's a, you know, it's a double-edged sword. I mean, you get these guys at low ownership because they're also 135 other good players. Right. Um, so it's not like that easy, but you, you'll definitely be happy with all of your lineups when you put them in. Um, and uh, what's also kind of fun about the, about the masters is from a, from a viewing perspective is that the masters actually does what probably the PGA should do for all tournaments is they give you access to like pretty much whatever golfers you want, a zillion different holes and all this stuff. And it just makes it a better viewing experience, both on TV and online. So mm -hmm. I, I am very much uh, looking forward to the masters this week. And as such, I will share my screen. And the first thing I will notice, and we'll go tier by tier, 
But the first thing I'll notice is that Scotty Scheffler is the top rated, you know, top seated guy for, for a salary goes. And whether it's not he's a good value or not, good for him. You know what I mean? He totally deserves it. He he was like the, the guy last year who everybody just said, how come he hasn't won yet? How come he hasn't won yet? And guys like that eventually do win, you know? <laughs> and he's been just killing it all year. Um, and uh, good for him to be priced up there. Whether we're going to play him or not, it's another story. But that's the first thing. So we'll, we'll do the same thing. We'll go tier by tier, and then we'll do our little contest at the end and, and whatever. So who do you like in the 11K down to 10K range, if anybody? And how does that fit your construction? And what do you like? Well, I, I do like a lot of guys up here because they're all great. But at the same time, I, I do want to point out that even probably for cash games or, or even in more conservative lineups, I don't think you have to play any of these guys. Um, there is a lot, a lot of guys who can win this tournament that are beneath this uh, 10K price range. But I, I do really like a few of them. So I guess my favorites, and I'm having trouble with the order, are JT, Rom, DJ, and Morikawa. Uh, Hovland still hasn't finished better than 12th in a major, but I don't think it's going to be long before he does. So I'm a little nervous about that. And then I always feel weird that, you know, we had the crazy Rory chalk last week and he did miss, misses the cut and no, I don't think he's going to get played much this week at 10 K. So I'm sort of just open to that idea, but I think Morikawa is the one who stands out as being the least, the lowest owned. I think Justin Thomas is my favorite to make it at least a deep run. And I think Rom is the best golfer in the world still by a little bit over Scheffler, but look, I have no problem if you want to play Shel Scheffler, uh, Hovland, DJ. It's just I'm, a, I'm finding a slight preference for the other guys. How about you? First of all, I would have had 71% Rory last week if my okay. entries were allowed to stand. So good on me. Yep. Um, uh, if I had to rank these guys for me, it would be really close between JT, Rory, and, and Rom. Um, and then a little bit of a drop to Scheffler and DJ. Uh, then way down to Hovland. For me, for me, Bobby, I, I don't think I'm going to play any of these guys. Um, like in I, any lineup, you're going to be you're going to be making a lot of lineups, right? Probably, um, but the handbill ones, I'm going to not. I'm probably not going to play a lot of these guys. I mean, like like you said, um, there's just there's just too many other guys that can win the tournament. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. Uh, so I mean, you can make cases for like seventy one hundred dollar guys or seventy five hundred dollar guys to win the tournament, um, and. In situations like that, I'm probably going to avoid this. Um, look, when I, when I run my builds, I'm going to get to some. You know, it's just the way it's going to be. But if, if, if I were, you know, just hand-building everything, I probably wouldn't play. I really probably wouldn't play any of these guys. Um, but uh, if I had to rank them, I would say JT, McElroy, and Rom just kind of tied. And then probably drop to Scheffler and a drop to DJ and Hovland just probably wouldn't make it. Gotcha. All right. Um Interesting. I, I, let's talk about the 9K range, because I'm guessing you're going to be loaded on this range, which I think it makes a lot of sense to do. These guys, uh, most of these guys, I absolutely love. Uh, a couple that I'm probably not going to play that I think some of the field will. Who are you looking at? No, I'm not going to be playing. Well, I shouldn't say that. I have them actually rated OK. I have um, have Cam Smith rated OK. I can't imagine he's, re he's really going to be as high owned as they're saying. Um, I got him like 18 percent ownership. It's, I don't think I just don't think it could be that much. Um, like you said, I mean, in 9,900, are, aren't people going to find the money to, for these other guys, if they're going to pay Cam Smith at 9,900, I don't know. Um, but he does rate to be pretty good for me, the top rated sub 10 K guy. He's, he's gotta be chalky is, is going to be Xander. I mean, he's 12% owned at what I have. He's just gotta be more, I, I think. But like you said, I mean, there's like a lot of guys you can play. So maybe ownership is just going to be kind of spread out. So I do like that. Um, Zalatoris at 9,200. I like that. And then model darling burger. Uh, this is the one time you're able to get him at, at lower ownership. Um, can he actually win the masters burger? I still think that when you play a guy at nine K, you, you want to have some winning upside. You know what I mean? Like, uh, you know, you can't just play a nine K guy to make top five. I think, um, I think you at least have to have some chance to win. I don't know if burger can win this tournament. Um, but certainly consistent enough to be a good play. And that's pretty much it. I'm not going to go and you can, you can do it. I'm telling you, I, I, this is such a Bobby play to win the million. Not going to do it. Not going to do go it. Right back to Hideki and just, to, oh, just that, to take all, that I am going to do <laughs> to take all the money. Yeah, I know. I'm not quite getting exactly get what I'm doing. Um, I will say this also, he's not projecting well, but Bryson DeChambeau at sub 5% on a, on a course that, that rewards like distance. Ouch. Uh, 
Dude, you can find me cases for so many guys. For me, Xander, top play. And then uh, then I would say Cam Smith, Zalatoris, and Berger. Yeah, I, 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 I'm baffled by this. I, I just think everybody's. Oh, I'm, to- I'm so sorry. I'm such a fish. What? I, I'm, I'm lo- I was looking. I, I apologize. I was looking down in, my, in that range of like on my value sheet. The guy I have is like second overall on the whole slate is Cantlay. Um, he's like basically my favorite play. Um, and I also like him at, at 25 plus to one uh, to win also. Uh, so, so yeah, I, I just erase everything. Cantlay, top play, then Xander and everything else I said. Yeah, I just am a little confused at the way people think about golf. So I just want to try to understand it. So Hideki okay. has a bad round. <laughs> and no one will play the guy who won this tournament last year at a cheaper at the, as the what the seventh the, the 13th highest 14th highest price golfer right and no one will play him but people will be more than happy to play Cantlay who just looked awful twice in a row right, right. and he's gonna have seven times the ownership I'm just trying to understand it. Like, well, I don't know. I got Canley only at eleven and a half percent. Yeah, I think he's going to be around one and a half percent. So. Yeah, I got him. Pre- I got him at like seven. You know, I oh, really? Spread, okay. I got it all spread out this week, but okay, that'll change. That'll change though. Wednesday, Wednesday, it all changed. Well, the part part of my love for Adeki is the ownership thing, and I just think it's when everyone's doing something the same way. I'm very happy to go the other way. You know, and especially, especially in golf. Yeah, was anybody really looking at the, the? He was trying to get his stuff with his swing down, like. That's not a real tournament for him to try. He wasn't trying to go out there and win that tournament. Like he was, that's just what he's doing. You know, he's, this is the master. This is not the same thing. Um, anyway, I'm very, I love like Brooks and Xander are going to be popular. I do like both of them. I love Cam Smith. I don't care that he's going to be popular. I think that he's, I actually kind of care that he's popular, but I, I, I just think he's a, he's really good and this course suits him perfectly. Um, so I like those guys and, and, just the ownership factor is draw, drawing me to a little Hideki. And that's, that's what I'm going to be on in this range. I, every Jordan Spieth always plays well at the masters. Um, can't lay is obviously, you know, if he returns to his form from, from a few months back to going back a year and a half, then great. But I will play the other, the guy who I always say the I can get the cheaper can't lay um, by playing Paul Casey. So I'll talk about that a little later. I'm a little worried about his back, but no, so will everyone else be. Anyway, I, I like that part of the range. I'm going to try and keep to those four as my main ones, but it's obviously a loaded range. And, it, you know, yeah, you're going to get low ownership on, on Bryce. If I hadn't watched Bryce play a little bit lately, I probably would be more open to playing him. He looks awful, like absolutely right. awful. Um, so if you're going to play Br- Bryce, play Tiger. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like if we're going to have all these question marks about somebody and who didn't play for a while and has is injured and says they're only 80% and hasn't shown one good thing about them. Why wouldn't I just play the greatest golf forever? Then if I was going to make that kind of a play, that's my personal take. Um, uh, let's go talk about the AK range sheets. Uh, I have a feeling you're going to like one of the same guys I like here. So why don't you yeah, I like three guys? Um, yeah. uh, I like Hatton at 8k. Love it. I like, uh, I'm, I'll give a I'll give a little speech about this one in a minute, but I like uh, I like Say Goodnight Raquel at 8200. Uh, Love him. Like that. Uh, that'd be you'll, that'd be Joaquin Neiman. Yep. Uh, and then uh, I'll give uh, this is the Matt Haber play. He uh, my son called me up. He got beat out of a carload of money two years a year or so ago in a tournament with this guy, um, and then he you know because he missed the four foot putt and he. Calls me yesterday. So who are you like the Masters? I said, "Why? Well, you know, I'm, I'm gonna look tomorrow." And he says, "I'm betting X, Y, Z at eighty to one or seventy to one or whatever it is. Not actually seventy to one. He's more like fifty to one." And I said, "Well, let's take a look at how it looks on the on the numbers. Looks good enough for me." So Sam Burns at eighty six hundred. Uh, let's go. So it would be Hatton, Burns, and Joaquin Neiman. And the next one I would go down to would be Shane Lowry. Yeah, I, I I'm a very big fan of this range. Um, again, it's a, but. This is the, this is the, you could literally start in this range if you wanted to this week. This yeah. is lo- loaded. Um, yeah. Only I, I'm totally with you on everybody. You said that they're, they're my guys exactly the same, except for I like Oosthausen a lot as well. Okay. And I like Adam Scott a lot as well. So Adam Scott, Neiman, and you know how I like to build lineups with them in the same range as, you know, 100 yep. price difference. And then Hatton down there. I love Hatton. Um, love yeah. Hatton, Neiman, and Scott as my favorites with Oosthausen as a, you know, just, just right there. But I also do like Lowry and Burns, and I am going to be the sucker who 
just goes above the field, which means probably 10 or 12% Tiger Woods. I don't care. All I, you know, everybody says he looks great yesterday. I just, if there's one guy, I just got one of tournament with a broken leg. Like if he's going to play, he, he believes he can play and compete. And obviously with only a hundred, with only a hundred players in the field and 50 making the cut, it's not like he's always going to kill you. If he doesn't, if he doesn't have his best game, you don't right. need him to win at 85. So I do like that whole 86 to 8k range, but uh, Scott Neiman, Hatton and, uh, yeah, Scott Neiman and Hatton are probably my favorite. Uh, my favorites. With a little shout out to Oosthuizen, is a little more expensive. All right, let's jump down into the uh, to the seven Ks. What do you got for me here, Sheets? Yeah, so my top two seven Ks are going to be just enormous chalk, uh, and top overall value play on the board for me is Matt Fitzpatrick. He's going to be a billion percent owned. I mean, for this tournament, that does I don't know what that's going to mean. Um, I can't imagine anybody being more than say 25% owned on the whole slate. Um, so, but I think Fitzpatrick is, you know, he's a model darling. He's going to be played and, you know, he's going to be played high in the big buy-ins. I, 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 agree, I think. And also my second one is Corey Connors. Who's going to be likewise. Um, he might be the highest owned player on the slate. Could be. Yeah, it could be. Um, so I think those two guys kind of dominate uh, one guy that I will, and then also people play Russ Henley, um, as always. So I got one for you, all the way down at 7K. Um, I have him at 5% owned. I just can't imagine people playing him in, in a tournament like this. But, you know, he's on the up and coming. He's got a, you know, he's been, he has, might have a win, might have a second. I forget how he actually finished in this other tournament. Second, yeah. Can but I'll take a shot at Cameron Young at 7K. Yep. Flat. So that would be, that would be my other one. Yeah, uh, again, this field is so loaded. It's really hard to just yeah. not. Um, I can almost like just want to say guys who I don't think I'll be playing as much. I'm definitely going to be below the field on Corey Connors. I'm not going to. I like the other players just as much as him in this range. So I don't need Fair to be five percent on guy. At, you know, I understand I'm going to do that with other guys, but I just don't like him as much. And he did look really good the last couple of weeks. And I'm just I'm just so aware of this this golf bias that's so bizarre too the way that it works. It's <laughs> very much unlike other th- other sports. Like they want the guys who are sort of do- are doing well coming close, but they never want the guys who are winning. Like it's right. like, and that is very interesting. Scheffler's like the only guy who one wins a tournament that gets double digit ownership. Like, right. um, all right. So I so going down I. I'm open to Henley, but not crazy about the ownership. I obviously am going to play Fleetwood. Um, I never. I never oh, right. That's right. I'm right. Right back to it again. And by the way, as you know, as much as we, we act like he's always letting me down. I mean, for a guy 7,700 who keeps, you know, top 25-ing or whatever, I'll take it, you know. Um, and, there, and he plays in good fields. He's able to play in all conditions. Um, uh, again, I like Fitzpatrick, but those guys are in the same price range. I have them both very, very high. Um, I also think, you know, just beneath them. It is just, it's just, I'm not, I'm not interested. I'm not playing these guys right now, but just interesting to think about guys like Justin Rose and Webb Simpson here who have some experience. And this is a course that generally rewards experience. And usually that gets baked into the ownership, but it's not with them. So they're having no ownership here. So I'm kind of just, just thinking about that. Um, another weird one, a get, a get weird play is Bubba at 73. Mm-hmm. And I really, the, but the priority at the other guys at the bottom, I do like Cam Young and Luke List, but I really like Max Homa. Um, and I think Siwoo is Siwoo. I thought was going to be much sneakier than he is. So the only I, I, I thought I was going to get him at like two or three percent, like I always do. But in fact, the people are on him this week. I'm probably not going to do it as much. I'm probably going to go to Homa, who I like a little better than Siwoo, who's going to have even a little lower ownership as what from what I'm seeing. But even even still, I, I think I would have just gone with the Homa route anyway. I just really like Homa here and uh, Cam Cam Young, Luke List. But the so I guess again priorities. Oh, I, I mentioned Casey, I thought, but Casey, Fitz, Fleetwood, Homa uh, are the ones I like the best in this range. All right, Sheets, your favorite part. And, and you don't need to say you don't need to do it because there, there's a couple guys down here. They, you know, we've seen some weird masters runs from, from literally some of the guys who are, who are on this list. <laughs> um, and we've seen some really, really good play from some guys this season. So who do, who do you like, if anyone, below this 6K range? I do. I like two guys. Um... And I'd, I'd like to think that they'd probably be the, the chalkier of the sub 7K guys, I guess. Um, one is Thomas Peters and at 6,600. The other one who I think is, I mean, I think he's, le- I mean, he's long. He's, he's, I think he's legit, can make a top 20 run 
Um, coming Woodland. back into form is Gary Woodland. Yeah. Um, so those are the two guys below 7K that I would be very happy to get to. Well, that's, I love it because that, that's literally the first two guys on my list. So that's nice Beautiful. to see. Um, but I think that there's a really good argument for the other guys, Tom Hoagie and Brian Harmon. Hoagie yeah. has been really, really good this year. And he's had, he even fought through some, like, what do you have that plus seven day? And then he had to shoot seven or eight under to make the cut. And he, he ends up making, you know, I think he finished like fifth or sixth. In the, he's just been really, really good. I can't even remember which tournament that was. Um, uh, Brian Harmon, again, looked really solid lately. I don't think that you're going to, you know, even being long off the tee is not necessarily like you can argue about how much it benefits you. It does definitely benefit you. But I think there's, there's enough, you know, tricky holes that a little crafty guy like Harmon can, can sort of navigate. No, but Brian Harmon gets the lefty bias. Um, yep. Yep. Yeah, so, so you got that. He, he probably, that probably offsets some of the distance stuff for him. Yep. Um, and then you have uh, Bezayden Hood is the other one as long with EVR, uh, Eric Van Ruyen that I would consider uh, maybe some more thin ones that are just a little further down that if you're playing a bunch of lineups, Ryan Palmer at 6,500. Dude, what about, what about your man? George Singh at 62. Matt Wolf. Yeah. I was going to get to him last. Um, okay. Uh, uh, Matt, uh, sorry. The, and I'm looking down at the very bottom. If there's anybody else. KH Lee at 6,200. Yeah. I mean, these, these are desperation. You don't need to play these guys. I'm just saying, if you're going to look, for some weird, get weird lower owned guys that, that or some low, uh, cheap guys that are low owned. Those are those are all interesting to me. I think there is an argument for Matt for Sepp Straka and then for Matt Wolf. Straka is going to have a little bit of ownership. Nobody's going to play Matt Wolf, and oh. it's just a you're, you're not. This is not something you're prioritizing. You don't want him. He shouldn't be in like your first build or something like that. But it's something you should at least consider that he's had you know some up. He's been really bad this year. Um, has we had to saw the same thing happen last year where he was just absolutely awful. The worst player in the field, like back-to-back -back tournaments sat out for a couple of weeks, comes back and wins the tournament or came in second. I believe. I just think there's enough upside where I'm willing to gamble that he just, you know, his mind, he, he believes he's as good as anybody else here. And there's a different path, his career, you take away the injury combined with the fact that he sort of lost his swing, which sort of they coincided with each other, that he could be the guy who'd be the Sam Burns this week. You know, he could be what this, that's where he was, you know, he's on that track. And it's just sort of falling apart for him. So if we're going to gar you know, argue for playing Bryson DeChambeau up at the top, who obviously is a better golfer than Matt Wolf, it's not that much of a different argument, though, when you're coming back off of injuries that were real and you want to take a shot on somebody, I'd rather take the 6,500 guy who, if he somehow gets me into the, I mean, if he somehow plays well day one, could easily find himself in the top, you know, 15 or 20 by the end of the tournament. Uh, I also like high, high, uh, high variance golfers who are, often going to make birdies but they're also going to be making eagles so i uh i'm just just a score from a scoring standpoint I, i'm i'm a little interested in matt wolf very shame very a shame not to see my guy pat and kazire here this week yeah uh, one of these days he'll get to play it hopefully but uh i was hoping for i was hoping for kazire to make it this week this this year but not that to be so i have the priority sheets it's very hard with the top range i think that this is like my strategy this week but uh, oh i guess i'm doing it too before we do our game but just my own ones i guess i'll say real quick Fitz, Casey, Homa, Neiman, Hatton, Scott, Peters, Woodland, Fleetwood. Um, those are the guys who I'm prioritizing. They're all below 9K. So I'm going to be mixing in a lot of the top range golfers with these guys. I got to do one more ownership run at least before I, before I, you know, commit to that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah. um, uh, I like, I like the, you know, the sub 10K range. You know, before but, we get into, uh, uh, you know, I guess we can get into it. So I, so I can, so I can hedge. So let's, let's, um, <laughs> let's let's have our thing so first of all any price tag who's gonna win okay so i'm gonna do it again i have a feeling about jt this week but it seems like everybody in the world has that feeling um i'm playing i i'm gonna say john rom i i can't help myself i i'll take the best golfer all right this is what i'm gonna do now i'm probably again this is not hedging because this is like a different contest I'm not going to probably prioritize these guys in, in, in DFS or whatever. I'm going to tell you. So if you say who's going to win, my, 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 my rhetorical question is who are the two best golfers playing the best right now? And I'm going to tell you who those two players are. Scotty one Scheffler. of them is Scotty <laughs> Scheffler. And the other one is the guy I'm going to announce for this contest. And it's, it, it's Dustin Johnson. Okay. I like, like he's Come into form. He made me a, a lot of money down the stretch and he played well in the match play and i i'm gonna pick dustin johnson to win the masters i like that call a lot actually uh all right why don't you start off with the uh the 9k range the top five 
yeah, I will, I will, uh, I will go with the guy that made all the money last year. I'll go with uh, Patrick Cantlay. All right. So that means I'm going to do this. Um, hold on one second. Uh, I am going to say, <sighs> I, I think my, my favorite answer is Cam Smith. Uh, I was hoping to get somebody a little lower on, but that's what I'm going to say. Sub 9K to make top 10. Sub 9K to top 10. I am going to say Adam Scott. Wow. I love Adam Scott. I think he looks good too. I, I mean, look, I could go with my guy Neiman. I could go with Adam Scott. I was going to go Neiman possibly. I was considering maybe Oosthausen, but I like Neiman Scott and uh, yeah, a lot, as I mentioned before, in Hatton. I'll go with the Matt Haber play. I'm going to go Sam Burns. Okay. So Burns, I have to add on there. I like I like Burns. I mean, you you know how big how much I love Burns in general, so I can never be mad at that one. Um, but yeah, all right. So let's move to the AK range. Is that under AK? Top 20. Yep. Uh, you want to go first? Yeah. I... All right. I'll just freaking do it. I'll go Matt Fitzpatrick. I can't. Do... He's right at the top of my value list. I have to get, I have to give him out somewhere. So, yeah, yeah Pat, I don't, Matt, nothing wrong with Fitz. I don't think there's a, there's a, that's a, a bad pick at all. And also, you, I mean, from what I'm looking at, I think he's going to be a lot lower owned than the other guy. Um, uh, then Corey Connors, they're both going to be really high owned, but I think they're yeah. both, I think, I think it's going to go more towards Connors by a lot. I really do. Um, I, I am going to say my, my, my top 20 guy who, who seems to always get me right in that range. I'm going to say, uh, Tommy Fleetwood, but I'm going to say if there's one guy down here, I think could win this tournament. I think it's my favorite would be, uh, Max Holman to win the tournament. You know who you didn't mention, by the way, we talked about the AK when you said you were going to talk about him later. What do you think of, uh, oh, I don't think he came up and we actually discussed oh. the range about Paul Casey. Oh, I do like Paul Casey a lot. I just it's a crowded uh, price tier for me because of Fleetwood and Fitzpatrick. But I really like Casey. I thought there were the, part of the problem why I don't like him is he withdrew from a real tournament with a, I think a real injury, uh, the last time we saw him. And after 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 coming in, you know that 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 tough yeah. play, that tough uh, fourth place finish before, yeah. um, I just I I I didn't think he was going to be his own basically, and he's higher owned than I thought he was going to be. So I'm, I've, I've sort of gone over to the other guys I originally liked, but I do like Paul Casey quite a bit. So under, under eight, under 7k to make the cut. Under 7k to make the cut is going to be, uh, I, I, I don't want to steal him from you. Cause I, I know we both like him. So I think Woodland is a great bet, but I, I'm going to say, I'll, I'll save the guy. I'll say th Thomas Peters. And I'll say Woodland. Cause I would have said Peters if you said one. There we go. Um, and, and, who, and who nine K this is tough. 9k or higher to miss a cut which is tough to miss this is a tough cut to miss that's for that's for sure um for for these guys um it's pretty easy call for me uh bryce could win the tournament and he can miss the cut <laughs> i'll take bryce yeah from i'm on i'm on tilt um from this guy not performing for me last time so i'm gonna give out colin morikawa to miss the cut. oh interesting Okay. I kind of like, I mean, I actually like, um, like Maury a little bit this week. He's such a solid iron player, Mark. Uh, it's like, it's kind of stupid to say, but it's true. Yeah. The course definitely it's, feels like it's his, it's his thing. I mean, he and JT, but those are the only, let me just see real quick. Yeah. JT and, and Mark, I will have some of those guys. It's too easy for me to say speed every week. So I'm not going to do it. I know. And although you'd be right most of the time. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, all right, guys. Well, good luck. Um, if we're able to, whether Sheets and I are able to or not, me and Kenny are going to do one tomorrow with some tea times because there is supposed to be some weather Friday afternoon. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm. I think I'm. I think I'm around. So. Okay, great. Yeah. So, so we uh, we'll, we'll take care of that then, and um, and, yeah. and we you know we'll have a, we'll have, we'll definitely able to max enter this thing once uh, once we win the basketball one tonight. Absolutely, you know it's happening. All right, good luck everybody.